Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how you use Blue Eye Macro to solve a CAPTCHA. So, on the Blue Eye Macro forums, someone had posted this. They were talking about that they wanted to make a, a CAPTCHA for this. So, I'm just using their picture. So, I went ahead, I've already written one to test it out. So, I'll show you. Let's see it in action. As you can see, it figured out what numbers they were and then it moved the mouse down to those numbers right now I don't have it clicking because this is just a still image but I'll show you how to do that when we edit the uh, macro but you can see here I'm not moving the mouse you can see it actually working as it's going through and figuring out all the numbers there you go so let's take a look at it so the first thing I did was use a freeze screen dump and that's because all these functions I have it I chose to use pixel patterns so every time it would look for a new pixel pattern blue eye macro would take another screenshot and I don't really need that I just need it once because these numbers aren't going to change and the locations of these buttons aren't going to change so it'll save on performance in the long run next is devising a system of how you're going to get and store these numbers on the capture. Um, you could use like a start a collection, save it to a file, use variables, then you have to pull them out and make sure they're in the right order. But I chose just to use a pixel pattern and then just go ahead and click on it. I'm not storing any variables or writing to files or anything like that. So as you can see, I just have first number, second number, third, and fourth because there's four numbers on here. So like I said, I chose pixel pattern and then basically this near coordinate, um, there's other parts of the instruction for color and pixel patterns, but I chose near coordinate. This really determines if it's the first number, second, third, or fourth for me because what I have it doing is going to an area like over here and if it's near this coordinate then that would be the first number if it's near this coordinate it'd be the second number and so on and you can see that over here all this part is still the pixel pattern all you have to do is open investigator and import this from investigator you don't have to write all this so the next thing is this range you can see from the tooltips it's 0 to 10, 0 being that the pixel pattern has to match exactly, and 10 saying it has a range of plus or minus 10 for the RGB values. I just went in the middle at 5, and it seemed to work fine, so I just left it. This next part is the coordinates that I was just talking about. So for the first number, I just chose a coordinate, it's about right there, and basically said, hey, if it's near that coordinate, then it's probably the first number. And then the second one, the 20, is how you tell Blue Eye Macro how near that coordinate or how far from that coordinate that the pixel pattern can be. I chose 20, and it seemed to work out pretty good. And basically, as you see in the tooltips, it's in any direction. So it's actually a little more than 20 because um, 20 in all directions from the center so basically like I said before it goes to this coordinate or a coordinate right about here and then it looks 20 pixels in all directions around it for the first number then the second number I have another coordinate over here and it looks 20 pixels around it for the second number so that's what all this means and that's how to set it up so some tips for you to set it up is this 20. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I actually created this macro twice. The first time on the third number I was able to use 20 and it worked. Then when I did another version for this video it didn't so I just bumped it up to 40 and it worked. So you can play around with the ranges and the tolerances and that's another suggestion that I would make before you go back and try and redefine your pixel patterns try changing the uh, 
the range of 5 and the RGB tolerance of 20 and see if it picks it up. If you can't get it to pick it up, then yeah, go ahead and redefine your pixel patterns there. So that's this whole section right here goes ahead and it finds the first number and then I have it set to right now to move to the coordinate and these coordinates correspond to the buttons down here all you have to do you can't use it like it is in a real capture situation because you need it to click but all you have to do is change this move to to click at coordinate and then it'll work for you so let's go ahead I'm gonna move this over like I said it, it, it moves to it I'll go ahead and change it for you let me get it to select it so click at coordinate and then there's actually more to it it's going to ask you which mouse button to use so if I go ahead and run it now it's going to click at the first number which is going to be 3 the rest of them still say move so after it clicks at 3 it's just going to move through the other ones there you go and you can see it Alright. When it clicked on the three the first time you saw the mouse go down, that's because I let go of the mouse and it just slid on my because of that cord. <laughs> but anyway, so all you have to do to set it up, set your own pixel patterns, mess around with the tolerance and the range if you're having any problems. When you go to use it, you can change them all to click at coordinate. When I'm creating them, I like to use move to that, because that allows me to see a lot of things. When it moves to it, let's say I'm using this number here and it goes three, four, and then three. It didn't go anywhere near one. So I know that something's wrong with that third number and probably need to go in and mess around with the range or the tolerance of it. So it's just a visual way for me to look and see what the mouse is doing instead of just the, the clicks since this is just an image. Another reason that I'm using an image first is because like in this game I think you only have three minutes. The chances of you creating a whole macro doing all your pixel patterns and setting it up within three minutes are pretty slim. So just take a whole bunch of screenshots, as many captures as you can, then you can close out your game, work on your macro, get it to work on all your images and then once you got to set it up with the images it should work fine in the game for you and you don't have to mess around with it so this is just going to be part one because um, you're actually going to have to add a little bit more code to this to get it to work in a gaming situation the reason why is I already knew this first number because I'm using a still image was going to be three so I only set it up with one pixel pattern and that's the number three which I can get away with over here because I have another three but as you see there's no number two so I would still have to create a pixel pattern for the number two but to make this work in your game each function here for your first number is gonna have four of these one for each number like this one just for the number three so you'd have to do one for one for the number two and then the number four and they would all go with inside this so when it runs it would say if the pixel pattern for number one can be found but it, it can't you can see it's three then it won't do anything it'll skip down is number two there no is number three there yes so then it'll click at number three so you do have to make some adjustments to this and I'll show you that in part two alright so Hope that helps getting you started, and we'll see you in the next video.